Hi guys, I hope you're doing really well. My name is Sarah and welcome to What The Horror, the channel where we talk about horror movies old and new. And horror adjacent movies because today we are talking about and reviewing the newly released Boy Kills World. When his family is murdered, a deaf mute named Boy escapes to the jungle and is trained by a mysterious shaman to repress his childish imagination and become an instrument of death. Boy Kills World was directed by Moritz Moore and produced by Sam Raimi and Roy Lee, and it stars a stellar cast of Bill Skarsgård, Jessica Roth, Famke Janssen, Michelle Dockery, Isaiah Mustafa, Brett Gelman, Andrew Koji, and Charlton Copley. The creme de la creme, the cherry on top of this cast, is the fact that the entire film is narrated by the honey, sultry tones of H. John Hannah. Also known as the voice actor for Bob Belcher from Bob's Burgers and Archer from Archer. And he is the main reason that I was excited about this film, I will be honest. So like I said, Boy Kills World is more horror adjacent than horror itself. There are moments in it that are horrific, as in the concept of what is happening to some of the characters, the story uh, that these characters go through. It is also incredibly, incredibly violent, bloody and gory. This certainly gives Abigail a run for its money. In fact, it probably outdoes it in terms of the violence and the gore and with the bloodshed as well. This is also a film that I have been highly anticipating and looking forward to. It wasn't one that I knew was coming out per se, but I did see the trailer um, suggested to me on YouTube and I watched it just excited that, you know, it's a new Bill Skarsgård film, but then I recognised the narration by H. John Hanna and I was instantly excited. I knew as soon as this film was released, my ass was going to be in that seat. And it was, and I was not disappointed. Just straight off the bat, I I'm going to say this is going to be a positive review. I absolutely loved this film and I am here to highly recommend it to you guys. So going through it, there are not going to be any negatives for this film. This is just going to be a positive uh, review, so I won't break it down into my usual negative, mixed and positives. I will just share some of my thoughts on the different aspects of the film, and then at the end I will give you my rating. And I will also recommend if I think it's worth seeing on the big screen or waiting to stream it or buy it. So, as we've already said, this film follows the character of Boy, a deaf mute who is out for revenge for the death of his family. Uh, it is set in a dystopian world. It is run by a mafia style family known as the Vandercoy. This concept on its own is really interesting. It's very reminiscent of Battle Royale and the Western remake Hunger Games. Um, so if you are a fan of dystopian worlds, I think this will be one for you as well. It is one, a story or an idea or concept that we've seen played out before, but what makes this interesting and a little bit different is that we follow this film and the events unfolding through the perception of Boy. So we never really zoom out and get a third person perspective and see what is going on with this dystopian world. What has happened? Why are things like this? Uh, how the Van der, Van, der Koy? Van der Koy's got their power. We only know what Boy knows and Boy's perception of things isn't always the most reliable and accurate and so his information changes and as does the audiences. So it is a dystopian world like the Divergent films, like Maze Runner, like Hunger Games, but we're not going to get too much detail about the reasons behind this and I don't feel like we really need them. This is Boy's story and that is enough, I think, for the audience. It's played by two different people. You have Bill Skarsgård as the adult, you also have a child version of it, so we get to really become invested in this character. We see them as a child, we see them as an adult and it's such an interesting character. I <laughs> pulled my hair. Boy is such an interesting character that they never speak, they can't speak, they can't hear, but so much is conveyed through the narration, through flashbacks, through facial expressions and physicalities that you really come to care for Boy. Uh, he is quite endearing. He's a complex character. This is not a, a simple character by, by any means. 
Uh, there is a complex story there. There's a heartbreaking story there. But so much is portrayed so well by the two actors that do it, especially Bill Skarsgård, as we get a big chunk with him. He conveys so much through his facial expressions and his physicality as well. A real physical presence. Okay, so the angle may have changed because I've had to change battery. And I also started to record the second half of this review, uh, only to realise I'd not press record on my camera. So I'm going to try and remember what it is that I have already said. <laughs> so, yes, physicality of Bill Skarsgård. Uh, let's just <laughs> talk about the elephant in the room. Bill Skarsgård is absolutely jacked up for this film and it's interesting because he's generally quite a tall lean person think about villains uh, hemlock grove it's you know pennywise barbarian he's quite a tall lean uh, uh, presence and so if you would say oh there's going to be this high adrenaline you know high energy ultra violent action film and your lead action hero is going to be Bill Skarsgård you would forgive some people for going really but honestly he holds his own in this he does incredibly well boy is a character that needs to balance that action hero with having emotion with having a character arc and complexities and Skarsgård delivers on every single element. He does the funny comedic bits. He does the heart-wrenching, heartwarming moments as well, the emotion, but he also holds his own and delivers on uh, the action side of things. He really is a believable action lead and action hero, especially in the fight scenes. For the rest of the cast, we have Jessica Roth, who is phenomenal in this again uh, there is a lot of reliance on her physicality and she's badass in this she is well known to the horror community as tree in happy death day and so in this film we see more of that sort of comedic line delivery of that timing but really just beautifully performed a highlight for me was actually michelle dockery who is in downton abbey as lady mary that's what i know her from and you could not get more any more far removed but she was such a delight in this the character's not but her performance uh is i mean she's horrible but it's funny it's really really entertaining such a great addition to the film highlights for me and i'm just checking their name was brett gelman he was in strange things he plays a van der Koy like the other two but his is a little bit of a different dynamic, so you have a bit more of a variety in your villains, which was really interesting. I loved him in Stranger Things. He was one of my favourite uh, characters, so it was great to see him in this. You also have a little comedy duo with Andrew Koji and Isaiah Mustafa. Um, they were brilliant. They did have this little comedy duo back and forth going on. Isaiah's character, though, is really interesting. I won't say... Uh, what the point is with him because he has this little sort of novelty thing about him and I just would love to have seen that pitch of here's his character do you want to play uh, this is the whole thing about them in the film <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that but yeah they're a really good injection as well just brilliant performances brilliant characters well written well acted there was no one really letting the side down Visuals are beautiful. This is set in a city just on the outskirts of the jungle. So we do get time in the jungle. We get time in a sort of shabby, uh, financially struggling town just on the outskirts of the jungle. And then we get the financially affluent and built up city as well. We also get a film set, uh, which is really cool. So you are getting a variety of settings. Things which is important for the fight scenes because you can utilise the the landscape within each of these settings for a fight scene. You know, you have a fight scene in the jungle, you have one in a shabby village, you have one in a warehouse on a film studio. And so where it's like John Wick in that there is a lot of action, a lot of fighting, fight scene after fight scene, you never get bored because the setting and what can be utilised within that setting is continually changing and moving forward. And talking of the fight scenes, the choreography in this film is impeccable. It is very like John Wick where you have, you know, big uh, groups of villains who are then coming on to the villain who can 
wipe them all out um, but just the you can see there's definitely some jujitsu moves in there you can see things like that uh, sometimes boy is using just his own body as a weapon sometimes he has other weapons to use as well which again keeps it interesting there's plenty of blood plenty of gore uh, but probably bordering on body horror some of the stuff that you're seeing I mean there are a couple of moments in the fight scenes. Most of it didn't bother me. I was just ha I was just sat there having a wonderful time. There were two that were a little bit, ooh, that's nasty. <laughs> I'll give you a clue. Uh, one of them is similar to something that happens in Evil Dead Rises, uh, and the other one is just nasty. But otherwise, I was having a wonderful time. I love a good fight scene. I love a well choreographed fight scene. It is quite a long film. It is just short of two hours. And I don't really believe that films need to be more than an hour and a half, an hour and 40 these days. So I'm quite critical when it comes to having a long run time. You have to have a long run time for a reason. There needs to be a purpose for it and not just that you are stretching it out. Boy Kills World never felt too long. I never felt like time was dragging. I was never watching the clock. I could have happily watched more of it for another hour, maybe even two. It was well paced. It was well sort of milestoned the progression of the story because it's not really a linear story. You open in the middle of it or a, kind of maybe at the back end of the first third and you keep going back and you get more information. So it is very dynamic, moves at a really good pace. You're never bored, even in the moments where you've got the high octane, high energy fights, and it drops back a bit for character development, for story development. It never, like it can't get that momentum back. It never feels like it peters off. It's just so well structured. And every scene, every piece of dialogue is there for a reason. It is either there to entertain you, it is either there to be badass, or it is either there to move the story and the film along. No time is wasted, no time is fluffed up and filled out. It is a very tight and well structured film, I will say. The way this film is made is structured very much like a graphic novel or anime or like a video arcade game from the 80s or 90s. So it may not be for everybody in the style of the storytelling. So while I'm saying go see it, I wouldn't be surprised if some people came out and thought, yeah, that wasn't really for me. This is not a John Wick. This is not a Mission Impossible action film. It is a very unique action film. So I should probably have made that clear. But for me, it worked. I don't really want to go into spoilers with this. Um, I don't think I really need to, but I will just say that in terms of the storyline, I was happy to go into this film, just have a good time with a good action movie. And I figured from the style of the trailer, because I will say the trailer doesn't really give away everything of the film. It makes it clear it's an action film in a dystopian world and he's out for revenge. But you get that in the very opening of the film anyway. It keeps a lot of secrets, it keeps a lot of reveals hidden, and I appreciate that from a trailer. And so going into it, I didn't know if perhaps the trailer had shown me everything. And I was pleasantly surprised that as this film developed, there were more human and heart-warming moments, heart-wrenching moments than I had expected. There are things to do with Boy and this world and these characters that really are such such a sad thing that these characters have experienced some of them the character arcs that you go on the the reveals that happen really really surprised me and i thought were really well done everything made sense and just i don't know i wasn't let down by the ending i wasn't let down by any reveals i was pleasantly surprised which doesn't often happen i often figure these things out so i really appreciated that so i would say if you're going into this thinking this is just a wham bam slam action film uh with no heart you could not be more wrong this is a wonderful magnificent film i said that in my letterbox review that this film is just magnificent in every way possible um full of surprises full of fun full of heart full of laughter full of blood and gore and body parts flying everywhere literally full of wonderful performances 
and all in all just a highlight of this year for me. So my rating of this film, um, it's not quite a perfect movie but it is damn close and so this film for me gets four and a half stars out of five and a heart and I'm not saying it will remain there but it is currently my favourite release of 2024. There was another film but this one beat it to it. I loved this film. Now I would say if you can go to see it on the big screen I would say do it. It is visually beautiful. The sounds and the visuals really do work on the big screen. For some reason on a Saturday night they seem to uh, hike the volume up as loud as they can so it was maybe a scooch too loud <laughs> for me but yeah it does translate well onto the big screen. However I'm not sure how long this is going to be around. It didn't feel like it was a big release in my theatre. It was saved for one of the smaller screens, which is a shame. So I don't know how long it's going to be out. And as I always say, you know, going to the theatre, the cinema is a luxury these days. So if you don't want to, or, you know, uh, it's just stretching the budget a little bit, I would say definitely stream it when it comes out. Definitely check it out. Definitely support this. Give it a go. Um, if you can get to the big screen, yeah, this is one that is worth seeing on there. Okay, so that is my review of Boy Kills World. I am aware this is more of a horror adjacent film, but I'm going to class it as horror. I have put this in my ranking of horror films of this year, uh, so expect to see it appear in my ranking of all the films at the end of the year. It will be interesting to see if it keeps that top spot. We are only in April at the moment and we have some gems coming out, but either way, this has been a highlight for me of this year. Let me know down below if you have seen this film and your thoughts on it or if you are going to go check it out. If you found me through this episode and you're new here then please do give this video a like and subscribe so you can join the What The Horror family. I have a extensive back catalogue of content. I have reviewed lots of other horror films from this year but I also do deep dives and analysis and evolutions of and if you would like to join this list of lovely names who get extra content every single week on top of the usually two episodes I do for this channel, there is a link to my Patreon page down below. These people are wonderful, they help support this channel and help uh, make it possible for me to create this free content for you guys. So if you'd like to become part of the Patreon family, there is a link in the description box. In the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really, really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye.